Darude Sandstorm is playing. We cannot lose. I think it's one of the best known unknown track in the world. All of a sudden, we had a hit record, and Sandstorm was really blowing up everywhere. One bark is yes, and two barks is no, and so I just trash my project if he barks twice. I wish I could say that there was this great plan or huge thing about making Sandstorm, but the funny thing is there's no like one point where you can say, I know exactly what it was. Before I started making music, I was more of a just club goer, coming from a small village and not really seeing those kind of places and those kind of parties. It was mind blowing for somebody like me that was my biggest influence in finding the spark to make my own music. 96, 97 was when I started making music. There was many a night where I went to the club come 3.30 when people are starting to be kicked out. I basically ran home, turned on my computer and started making music. Having just heard something that I really liked and like, oh, that kick, kick drum, how's that? The EQ and the, the like, hi-hat goes whatever. I was looking and listening for patterns and analyzing 24-7. Thinking back now about making Sandstorm, back then we were using an Atari SD with Cubase on a black and white screen and 16 MIDI tracks, all the filter sweeps, any level fades and the buildups in the drums, uh, snares for instance, they were manually done. Literally the rack had four hands on it, you know, Nord lead higher, the uh, 8080 under, and it's Incredible to think that the final thing that everybody now hears as Sandstorm was actually mixed down really live, real time, and that was really cool. Two years before I made the Sandstorm track, I actually made the that melody, the 16th note thing, literally almost two years later when I sort of pulled that project file up again. Um, I distorted it and then it became the Sandstorm lead sound. I got some local DJs to play it and they liked it, but I don't think it would have gone nearly as big or anywhere without Jakko Salovara J16 to produce it with me. I met him in a disco where I was playing and I remember he brought me those demo CDs many times, but I didn't listen to them in the beginning, but I, I think it was the third time when I listened it and it was just at the right time, then I started 16-inch records. And my first artist was Darud. It didn't take long to finish Sandstorm. It, it happened all very quickly. I think it was two days we spent in, in the studio. So this is my Darud rack. There is Nur rack 2. We used it in Sandstorm. It's great. Also, this, this machine is very important. It was mind-blowing to get to produce something with him. Like, by that time, he'd been the producer of the year for a couple of years in a row in Finland, and I looked up to him. He was working on Bumfunk MCs, which was on the radio at that time. And so we took the track to a couple of other DJs that following weekend, and we already then saw the weird effect. Like, people went nuts with the track the first listen. That happened to me in two weeks. From total hobbyist, I started seeing my music being played by DJs and took off. I met the track before I met Darud, aka Ville. 
I'm one of the first, even if the first DJ who ever played that track. And uh, little I know or <laughs> anybody how big hit that will be. I think I played the track immediately at that night. Next summer, when I went to Ibiza, I heard that track everywhere. On record shops, it was on the clothing shops, on the beach parties, and nightclubs, and everywhere. Then I was like, oh dear, this is massive. This beautiful day, we're gonna see the Helsinki Cathedral against the blue sky. You can see it in the Sandstorm music video. Uh, we're gonna meet Juuso Surya, who was the director of the video. Yay! Hey. Many people know this. This church has a new name, Sandstorm, of course. My idea for, for this location and, and for this place was to highlight Helsinki as mm -hmm. a cool city. You had it all figured out and I was very uh, green, very wet behind the ears. My first music video and uh, I basically... But that was my, my first music video too. <laughs> <laughs> of course, nobody knew. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be big or, big or, or not? And, yeah, and it was... Suddenly it all started and suddenly it, it was getting bigger and bigger. It all sort of dawned on me how amazing it was and how many little things happened in such a talented circle of people. Have you noticed that there was a mistake? No, don't tell that. Yeah, I, I, I will tell it now. All the secrets are revealing now. No gun. Oh. Gun. <laughs> and train birds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you are. That's me. Yeah, you, uh, maybe you have some kind of superpowers because yeah. you are changing location without moving at all. And... Oh, I miss those shades. This is where, even though I'm stressed or tired or whatever, skating is fun and it also sort of clears my mind. And especially when I get to come with him and see him getting pretty good at skating, I'm going to have to uh, do my best very soon to keep up with him. I think Darud was a little bit outsider of that DJ scene. He wasn't the DJ in the beginning. He started to DJ after that success, what he had. All that thing was very new for him in the beginning, but he learned very quickly. It was very important for him to also find a way how to do it. But I felt that he had to prove something very quickly. Darud was not so known in DJing circuits in, in, in Helsinki. It was quite a unique situation where basically Ville didn't play so much in Helsinki at all. He was already playing internationally. It kept him a little bit of kind of a mystery. He was kind of a mystery guy. There was this vibe here and there that I felt that I don't sort of belong to the inner circle in certain places. It's sort of understandable because I wasn't a DJ and I wasn't a known figure in the scene. And then all of a sudden within couple of weeks or a couple of months, I'm actually getting booked to the same places where these established DJs were playing. And so I didn't have the, you know, their history of, or maybe I hadn't paid my dues. Not being a DJ at that point, I sort of understand it. But then, of course, it, it wasn't my fault that my track became successful. The track did it itself. DJs blew it up at clubs. The only big negative was initially was signed to Strictly Rhythm in US. It was a great home for Sandstorm, but their whole label closed down, shut down. 
and uh, my track got stuck and actually the first album got stuck in their legal battle and that meant that I had a crowd in US I was touring there all the time but I play a great gig people want my music and I'm like you don't have any It was a long time ago when it first came out, so there's been these lulls, and it's mind-blowing to me. It's being talked about again. Fuck, I can't lose if Darude on. One day while I was streaming, I just happened to have a Sandstorm playing on my playlist. The gaming industry and the culture, it's sort of a new thing for me. I've known my track has been played and mimified for a couple of years now. I guess there are various stories of why that started, but one of them is that a uh, very well-known and crazy good gamer was listening to Sandstorm when he was ruling the world in, in his League of Legends sessions. Then people were asking, what song is it? I still don't in practice know how it happened or why it got so out of hand. YouTube. On April Fool's Day, they did, did a sandstorm prank. I mean, it doesn't really get any better than that. I know some people are joking. Some people are trying to provoke something, you know, my reaction, or they're, they're basically flipping a finger, whatever. I couldn't care less about that. I mean, it's 2016 and they're still talking about my track. I, I believe the joke's on them if they think it's a joke. The last two years, I've had a boom in my bookings and in, uh, online visibility and we've actually used that on purpose. We've fed some meme stuff and we've done a prank, April Fool's prank with YouTube and a couple of other things. It's all in good fun and like I said, it's all good if somebody wants to talk about my track right now after 16 years. And um, I don't make music differently. I don't really think too much differently other than, yeah, I'm way more cynical about some stuff and whatever these days, but and I have so much more thicker skin, so the fun poking doesn't really affect me in a, in a negative way anymore. It did at some point, but I mean, that was way before the meme thing. Yeah, we're in uh, Serena in Espoo in Finland, and uh, the event is called Waterland. This is sort of a legendary party in Finland. It's such a treat for especially us Finns in the middle of the winter. I enjoy thoroughly where I am right now. I've been around as the root for about 17 years. The success of the track is basically the thing that everything is based on. And um, I don't have a problem with that. I'll always cherish the whole project. I've learned to live with the gift and a curse. What I want to do now is just make new music, collaborate with people and keep on doing what I do because that's sort of the only thing I know how to do and like to do. And I've been fortunate to be able to do that as my only job. I mean, it's the biggest thing one can hope for. And the name of the track itself, um, Sandstorm, how, how did that come about? It came from a very uh, sort of simple and easy and unimaginative source. Roland JP8080, you pull it out of the box and turn it on, and it's a sandstorm. That's it. <laughs> 